yield in the crops, the methods, all that we will read in this topic. So different types of crops are grown for food purpose. All of you know that, right? So what are the different types of crops? Cereal crops, pulses, oil seeds, vegetables, spices, fruits, and then fodder crops are for food for the livestock, for the poultry animals, for the cattle. In cereals, what we grow? Wheat, rice, everything. Then pulses comes all the dals, what you eat, Bengal gram dal and all the dals. Then oil seeds are sunflower oil, linseed oil, castor oil, soya bean oil, all these are oil seeds. Then vegetables, spices and fruits provide us vitamins and minerals necessary for the body. Pulses give us proteins, oil seeds give us fats, cereals give us carbohydrates. Then fodder crops, the fodder crops are like oats, oats are grown as fodder crops food for the animals then for these crops to grow properly for all the for the crops to grow properly climatic conditions should be good if there is excessive rainfall or if there is excessive summer then if there is drought when there is no rainfall there will be drought right drought is no rainfall area where there is heavy summer then if there is excessive rainfall like excessive frost excessive snow then all this will affect the crop production so climatic conditions need to be good then extreme temperatures like frost white cold or extreme heat will also affect so temperatures also need to be accurate then life cycle completion the life cycle should be completed before so the life cycle completion of the crop is also important so life cycle completion means the process where from starting from the place where you start planting the seeds to the time where you harvest that means Flowing to harvesting is called the life cycle completion. Growing the seeds, then cultivating them, watering them, irrigation, protecting from the weeds, storage till harvesting. The life cycle completion also is important. Then nowadays farmers select a small life cycle plant. That means within four months the plants can be harvested. So that way farmer will have more yield and his income will also increase. So life cycle completion of the plant is also important. Then photo period of sunlight that is also important because in presence of sunlight only photosynthetic activity will be carried out by the plants. Photosynthetic activity is necessary for the production of food for the plants. Then there are two types of plants mainly, two types of crops depending on the time which they grow. So they are called kharif crops. Kharif crops grow from June to October that is in the rainy season and the main crops in the grown in these kharif crops are kharif are maize and cotton then moving on to the next one is rabi crops rabi crops are grown from november to april they are in the winter season crops then the examples of these crops grown in the rabi season are wheat gram pea mustard and linseed linseed is for oil purpose then you know in 1960 to 2004 there was 25% increase in india in the cultivable area of land cultivable area land where the crops can be cultivated then what are the practices in farming? What are the important in the farming practice? Choice of seeds. The seeds should be of good choice. The farmer should select good quality seeds. Then nurturing of the crops. That means good nutrients should be provided to the crops. Then protection of the growing and harvested crops from loss. So not only harvesting, you have to proper store the crops, okay? Prevent it from loss. Sometimes if I am storing the crops, they may have a rodent attack. Rodent like rats or any other animals may attack it. May attack the plants. So protection of the growing and harvested crop from loss is also important. So in improving the crop yield, three major things are practiced. Crop variety management, crop production management, and crop protection management. Now we will be knowing in detail about these three processes. In improving the crop yields, the first topic will be crop variety improvement. So we have to find a crop which gives a good yield. Good yield means increase in quantity of the crops. So for this we have to select a good, good crop which gives a good yield. So selection of a crop is also important. Then we can do hybridization. Nowadays we get many fruits and vegetables of hybrid variety. What are hybridization? Crossing two different species or crossing two different varieties to produce a new, new varieties for hybridization. So hybridization can be of three types, intervarietal that is crossing two different varieties of plants to produce a new variety or it can also be interspecific, crossing two different species of the same genus or family to get a new variety, high yielding variety or intergeneric, crossing two varieties of different genus, genera. Then we can also introduce a gene that means we will get a genetically modified plant 
by introducing the desirable characteristic G. Then we can have to use a good quality seeds. We cannot plant bad or dead seeds, right? So we have to get good quality seeds so that they germinate properly. Then whether soil quality also needs to be good. The soil should have good water holding capacity. Then availability of water is very important. Without water, plants cannot grow. Then they should be tolerable to the high soil salinity. Suppose if the soil has more salt levels, less nutrient levels, such crops should be tolerable to the high soil salinity. Then diverse climatic conditions are also important. Different climatic conditions would be like extreme heat, extreme cold, or frost. Then those crops should be tolerant to the diverse climatic conditions. Then for which factors for which variety improvement is done, all these why it is done because to have a higher yield of plants, then there are two things biotic resistance and abiotic resistance. Biotic resistance is resistance towards diseases, insects, and nematodes. Then this is biotic the abiotic resistance means drought, salinity, water logging, heat, cold, frost, heat, cold, and frost. So these are the biotic resistance and abiotic resistance factors for which high improve, for which variety improvement is done. Then change in maturity duration. Then some crops from sowing to harvesting only take four months time. Such type of crops will give good yield and increase the income of the farmer. That's why change in maturity duration is also important. Then wider adaptability. That means plants should be able to avoid to all the diverse climatic conditions so that they can grow in any climatic condition. Then desirable agronomic qualities like tall plants, dwarf plants. Sometimes tall plants are required, sometimes dwarf plants are required for growing cereals. All these increase the productivity of the crop. So this is about crop variety improvement. So now we will be dealing about crop production management. What all factors come in this and what all things are required for production management. So we know there are different types of farmers in the country. Some will be poor, some will be rich. And they have different quantity of land. Some will be having many less acres of land. Some will be having more acres of land. And definitely they will have different levels of money with them. Some will be very rich with much, much money. Some farmers will be poor. Who have less quantity of land will be poor. So there are different levels of farmers. There are different levels of lands they have. And there are different levels of money they, they have. Then it is only money or financial conditions. Which it, it's only money or financial conditions. Which decides the input or yield of the crop. So if they have more money. They will apply more number of techniques like scientific management and more technology they will apply. If they have less money, they cannot apply much technology. They cannot use new scientific methods. They cannot buy more fertilizers. Right? So money or financial conditions decide the input or yield of the crop. Then there are three types of production. No cost production, low cost production and high cost production. Then in crop production management, the first thing we have to manage is nutrient management. So like we need food for growth, right? We take different types of food. Same way plants require nutrients for their growth, food for growth. What is food here? Food is nothing but nutrients. So here in plants, for plants the food is nutrients and they, they require nutrients for growth. These nutrients are supplied to the plants by air, water and soil because plants need all the three things. Then with the help of air what is supplied carbon and oxygen and with the help of water hydrogen and oxygen and with the help of soil the remaining nutrients. The remaining nutrients are called micronutrients and macronutrients. So overall plants require 16 nutrients, main nutrients for their growth. Out of this 16, air, water and soil are the three main things which supply these nutrients. And air and water make for three nutrients, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So out of these 16 nutrients, air and water supply the three, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So the remaining 13, the remaining 13 are supplied by the soil. And these 13 are again divided into 7 and 6. So the more number are known as micronutrients and the less number are known as macronutrients.